Yeah, Charles, uh, stock markets here in Asia rounding out the year with something of a rally. Take a look at this. We've had two days of falling prices today. We've got a few more green arrows, which is quite nice to see. Thin trade, as there was in Europe, of course, because of the holiday period. And really, the gains here are tracking what happened in the US overnight. Uh, Shanghai, you'll see they're up by 1.2%, and that came despite some new manufacturing numbers, which shows that uh, manufacturing orders contracting for a second month in, de in succession. That happened in December. And in Sydney, the market there, as you see, bucking the trend down by about a third of 1%. Now, that's how the day looked. And let's take a look at what's been happening for the markets over the year, the performances over the past 12 months. I want to start here with India, which is, would you believe, the worst performing major market in the region. As you can see there, quite clearly it's been going down pretty much since day one. The main reason for that, inflation and rising interest rates pretty much all year. Another market that's been heavily in the news this year is, of course, Thailand, but would you believe it's one of the region's best performing major markets? And it was, as you see here, just about even until here. That was the big floods. And then we had, of course, the big fall. It has recovered just a little bit. And you can see now it's down by about 1.5% for the year. So Thailand down nearly 2%. New Zealand down 1%, a good performance. The other big major markets, though, Australia, for example, down 15%. And the, uh, the Nikkei, the Hong Kong Hang Seng, and the Shanghai Composite, all down between 15 and 21%. All of them, and I want to illustrate this by having a look at Hong Kong. If you look at what happened in Hong Kong, this is a really good uh, guide, if you like, to the year as a whole. In the summer months, we saw the fall here, and that was two things. Contagion in Europe, of course, and also the US debt ceiling and the uh, following credit downgrade in early August. So that's where we saw the real fall off towards the end of the year. That pattern was pretty much repeated across the major markets around the world. And of course, uh, if I can just get uh, the uh, Nikkei up here, take a look at this, because of course we had the big fall off in March, March 11. That was the tsunami uh, following the earthquake. We did have a semblance of recovery then. And then as we headed towards the end of the year, the same sort of problems. There is one extra problem, of course, though, with the Nikkei, and that was the yen. Very strong yen all year, hurting the big exporters, which hurts the overall market. But there is actually one market that finished higher. Jakarta, would you believe? The Jakarta Composite was the best performing market in the region in 2011, up by almost 3%. And that came despite that familiar fall that you see there in August and October. And I remember, Charles, uh, I was in uh, Indonesia a little earlier this year, and there was a real buzz about uh, the Indonesian economy taking off despite what was going on around the world. And certainly the investment community has got onto that. Relatively speaking, it's been a pretty good year in Indonesia. Well, welcome. Congratulations to the Indonesians. Uh, clearly, they've got a lot of things right.